Good morning, everyone. This is Genevieve Rushing, and it's so good to talk to you again. I hope you all are having a good day full of God's blessings. Well, today, I want to start out by telling you about the day I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. All my friends, it was supernatural. It was the most life-changing experience I have ever had. It was back more than 30 years ago. My husband and I were on our knees. Things weren't going well in our lives and we knew we needed help. So my husband started the prayer. I wasn't very good at praying, so he prayed. And then I realized deep down inside that I needed to say something. So all I said was, Jesus, please don't turn your back on me. I need you to. And as soon as I spoke those words, I heard something. I felt something, like the sound of a strong wind roaring inside my body. This powerful gust of wind came pouring into my body. I heard it. I felt it. And it filled my body from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet and it took my breath away. I said to my husband, what was that? Did you feel that? My goodness. I didn't know what it was, but my life has never been the same since. And at that time, there was a girl I knew who would call me every once in a while and visit me. And she would tell me about Jesus and how that he changed her life. So when I had this encounter with the Holy Spirit, I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit at the time, but I called her and I told her that I thought that I was born again. And she took me to her church that next Sunday and the rest is history. I got into a Bible study with a group of ladies from that sweet Bible-believing church. I began to learn all about salvation and Jesus, the cross, forgiveness of sins, becoming a new person, the resurrection. Now, these were things that I already knew from before, from my childhood, but I knew them in my head, in my mind, but when that gust of wind broke into my body and filled me, it was like I knew it in my heart. I didn't just know it in my mind. And I began a journey with the Lord. But this video really isn't about me. It's about the Holy Spirit. From my classes and reading the Word, I learned all about salvation, about becoming a new person. Once we are saved, the Bible tells us, the old life is gone and a new life begins. All those things I learned, but that was more than 30 years ago. And through the years, my husband and I have been blessed to be a part of a church family blessed to hear the word taught, blessed to worship with other believers who in response to lives ups and downs sought the Lord. It's been wonderful. And so that day in my life when I met the Holy Spirit was an amazing beginning to an amazing journey. But last year, in 2020, we're all familiar with 2020, I'm sure. I just couldn't take all that bad news, all the negativity, all the things that Satan was doing to take away our joy and create fear and doubt in our hearts. I just couldn't take it anymore. And so I turned away from all that and I began to study the Word, to get into the Word. I began studying on my own and the more I studied, the hungrier I became to hear from God instead of the news, social media. 
So God showed me many things, but today I just want to share with you what I learned about the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness, where do I start? He taught me that the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. The Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that God used in the creation of the universe. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the Spirit of the Lord was <coughs> excuse me, hovering <coughs> over the surface. And that first day God spoke because of the power of his spirit. He spoke and said, let there be, and there was. And you know the rest of the story of creation. The Holy Spirit was there from the very beginning. King David in the Old Testament prayed for God not to take the spirit of the Lord away from him. He knew the Holy Spirit and he begged God to not take him away, take Holy Spirit away from him. He was a very wealthy man and he didn't care whether other things were taken away from him. In the Old Testament, God would give people his spirit in accordance with his will, but back then they had to kill an animal and use the animal's blood as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of their sins. It was a ritual that took place over and over year after year. It was always temporary. But then God's plan of redemption and salvation came to us. His son Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, he was the sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's how the New Testament begins. When his blood was shed, animal sacrifices stopped because his blood was perfect and it satisfied our Father in heaven's need for justification. But our involvement in God's plan is not automatic, my friends. To be saved, we have to believe in our hearts that Jesus died for our sins, for our pain, for our sorrows, for our sicknesses, Isaiah 53, and confess with our mouths that he is our Lord and our Savior, that God raised him from the dead, After Jesus suffered and died on the cross, Father God, through the power of his spirit, raised him from the grave on the third day. He was the first. And we, the church, his body, follow his example. That when we accept Jesus' sacrifice, his gift to us, we die to the old self and we're raised up as a new creation. Old things have passed away and a new life has begun. And at the instant of our salvation, at the instant, not later when something else happens, but at the instant that we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and moves into our hearts. And that's what happened to me more than 30 years ago. But it's a different experience for everyone. You may not feel him, you may not hear him, but he comes. It happens. The word tells us so. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you the Holy Spirit is fully God. He's the power behind everything. He's the power that brought the universe into existence. He's the power that raised Jesus from the dead. He's the power that brought about all the healings that we read about in the Gospels, the book of Acts. Remember Jesus told us, I will tell the Father to give you the helper after I'm gone. He will come to be with you and be in you and he will teach you all things and he will bring to remembrance the things that I have told you. Hallelujah. So friends, Oh, please listen to me. If you are saved, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit, the one that I've been talking to you about, is living on the inside of you. 
the revelation I received in 2020 was who the Holy Spirit is and who I am to him. The Bible says that he delights in us. We bring him joy. Can you imagine that? He loves us so much. He wants to help us. He's our comforter, our helper. He's our everything. So what does that mean exactly on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, everybody has their own walk with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with God the Father. We all have different gifts, but all of us have the fruit, the same fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is one fruit. So in this one fruit, he automatically gives us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It's all there for us to use. We just have to choose to use it. You know, people quote that scripture that tells us we live by faith and not by sight. But do they really understand what that means in everyday life? It means that when we hear all the bad news, all the opinions of social media, what the president's doing, what he's not doing, we don't live by that. We live by faith in Jesus, in his word. And what does he say in his word? He says, oh, my children, I love you so much. I've given you everything. I've given you access to my power, the Holy Spirit power. So instead of exposing your mind, your soul, your spirit to all that dark stuff, receive what I've given you and understand that all these things have to pass. Wars, disasters, you name it, all the stuff Satan gives us, it's all there in the Bible. Oh, friends, let's not be afraid of what we see, what we hear, what we feel. Let's let that go and make the Holy Spirit our best friend. He wants to be our best friend. He wants to be our companion. Talk to him. Speak to him. He will speak back life into your body. He'll speak back life into every situation you find yourself in. Friends, I'm sharing what the Holy Spirit has been teaching me. He's everything. He's God. That's why the Bible says he will never leave us or forsake us. It's because he lives on the inside of us. He's always with us. That's why Jesus told us that when we receive his spirit, we will be able to do even greater works than he did. Do you know what that means? It means that all the miracles that Jesus performed through the power of his spirit, that we can do even greater things if we could just get a hold of that and try to understand it and let the Holy Spirit guide us. Listen, I wake up every morning and before I get out of bed, I speak to the Holy Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, I release your power into my body, into my loved ones. I release my Holy Spirit power into the world because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And every day he tells me, don't be afraid. I'm here. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that whoever is listening would get a revelation. Oh, let go of the fear, the anxiety, the depression, all those works of the enemy and start having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Have a grateful heart. Feed yourself the fruit that he gives us freely every day. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I hope this video has blessed you. And I'm going to let you go for today. But until next time, know how much the Holy Spirit loves you.
and wants to help you.